NASA is finally returning to the moon. For the first time in nearly 50 years, there's a rocket capable of sending astronauts beyond low Earth orbit and back to the moon. This is NASA's Space Launch System, the gigantic rocket built for deep space exploration missions. But while SLS is making its trek to the launch pad, many are wondering why NASA is planning on using it at all. Recently, reports have come out stating that the SLS rocket may experience costs of up to $4.1 billion each time it launches to the moon. This amount of money for each launch seems quite excessive, but is it actually true? How much does the SLS rocket really cost? In order to understand the cost complexities of NASA's monster rocket, we first need to understand the monster rocket in question. The Space Launch System is a shuttle-derived super heavy lift launch vehicle designed for crewed exploration missions beyond low Earth orbit. Being a shuttle-derived rocket, many features of the rocket itself are actually holdovers from the original shuttle program. This includes the solid rocket boosters and RS-25 engines. These solid rocket boosters are derived from the original space shuttle design, but now feature an additional fifth segment in order to provide even more power at launch for a grand total of 7.2 million pounds of thrust from just the solid rocket boosters. These SRBs are also flight proven, with most of the segments having been flown on previous shuttle flights, going as far back as STS-31 in 1990. The RS-25 engines that power the SLS Corsage are also veterans of the shuttle program, with a total of 25 flights between each of the engines. Each SLS Corsage features four of these former Space Shuttle main engines, which when firing produce up to 1.6 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. In addition to the RS-25s, another engine flown on the Space Shuttle is being reused for SLS. This is the AJ-10, a small hypergolic engine used for orbital maneuvering on the Space Shuttle and is now being repurposed as the service module engine for the Orion spacecraft. The AJ-10 flying on Artemis 1 has flown to space 19 times, with the first flight being on STS-41G in 1984. In addition to these veteran parts that were flown on many shuttle missions, the upper stage of the SLS rocket is also a derived piece of hardware. This is the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, a 45-foot-long hydrolock stage used to send the Orion spacecraft on a translunar injection. While not directly reused in the sense of having multiple flights on one stage, it is reused from another program, that of the Delta series of rockets. But this then begs the question, if SLS reuses so much hardware, why is it still so expensive? One could imagine that reusing hardware means you don't have to pay the cost of developing new hardware, saving time and potentially millions of dollars. Well, as it turns out, SLS's reuse of hardware not only saved time, but actually saved money on the rocket. In order to understand how much money reusing parts for the SLS rocket ended up saving, we need to go back to the Apollo era and take a look at the monster Saturn V rocket. During the Apollo era, NASA was developing its gigantic Saturn V rocket in order to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade. This colossal rocket was to be the biggest and most powerful rocket ever designed, reaching a height of 363 feet tall and 7.8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. But to develop this rocket, NASA would need to build two out of the three rocket stages entirely from the ground up. While the S-4B rocket stage and the J-2 engines were being reused from the Saturn 1B, the S-2 stage as well as the S-1C stage and its F-1 engines had to be developed from essentially nothing. Building the two largest rocket stages ever seen in human history up to that point was by no means easy or cheap, and this was reflected in how much money was spent just to develop the Saturn V rocket. While estimates vary, numbers from as low as $49.9 billion to up to $66 billion have been suggested as the true development cost of this monster rocket. We can now compare this to the development cost of the SLS rocket, which as of 2022 has reached a cost of a mere $22.3 billion, less than half of the low-end estimate of the Saturn V rocket, and just a little over one-third of the high-end cost estimate for the Saturn V, despite being nearly just as large and even more powerful. The reason for this is that where the SLS would have normally had to develop three brand new stages along with engines to go with each of them just for launch, it was able to reuse an upper stage and the solid rocket boosters, which are functionally the same as a first stage, along with the already flying RS-25 and RL-10 engines. 
This ended up meaning that SLS only had to develop a single rocket stage, the gigantic core stage. And this can be seen in just how long it took to complete each component of the SLS rocket. The ICPS for Artemis 1 was completed all the way back in 2016. The solid rocket boosters had been completed as far back as 2017, and the RS-25 engines were also finished by 2017. This contrasts greatly with the SLS core stage, which would not be finished until 2020, three years later. Reusing components did in fact serve their purpose of saving time. The SLS core stage, however, shared no heritage with anything, even the external fuel tank of the space shuttle, and took far longer to complete than NASA expected, thus nullifying the time savings brought on by reusing the rest of the hardware. That being said, reusing hardware still made SLS far cheaper than it would have otherwise have been. We already discussed just how much money was spent on the Saturn V rocket, but even going forward in time to the rocket SLS is derived from, we see a similar story. The space shuttle was built entirely from scratch and had a development cost of $49.9 billion, over twice as much as the SLS. But development costs are only a single part of the cost equation. The other half is launch costs. While SLS might have been relatively cheap thanks to the reuse of hardware during the development phase of the program, the launch costs of SLS are incredibly high, up to $4.1 billion just to launch a single rocket. Although that too might not be entirely accurate. This number of $4.1 billion comes to us from the NASA Office of Inspector General, or OIG for short. In a report released in November of 2021, they said that the SLS rocket would cost $4.1 billion per launch for the first four launches. Since then, this $4.1 billion number has been tossed around as a general per-flight cost of the SLS rocket. But this is actually quite misleading. Reading more into what the OIG actually says, it becomes clear that this cost is not actually the cost of an SLS launch. This $4.1 billion number is the cost of three separate programs, Exploration Ground Systems, the SLS rocket, and the Orion spacecraft. The Exploration Ground Systems program is a program that deals with all the groundwork that is required to get SLS built and launched into space. The Orion spacecraft is the Constellation era spacecraft designed to keep astronauts alive and safe during trips to and from the moon, and SLS is the rocket that sends Orion into deep space. This is significant because the cost of SLS is not the same as the cost of all three of these programs working together. In fact, the OIG actually says this. The OIG states that the cost of an SLS rocket is actually just $2.2 billion for launch, which is a number we've known for a very long time. They also say that for each mission, an Orion spacecraft will cost $1.3 billion and the exploration ground systems will cost $586 million. But that doesn't change anything, does it? Orion is tied to SLS, so its cost should be tied to SLS too, right? Actually, no. To date, Orion has flown to orbit one time, and that mission, known as Exploration Mission 1, was not flown on an SLS rocket, but rather another rocket known as the Delta IV Heavy, hardly tying Orion to SLS. Along with this, SLS has been designed to fly on its own eventually without an Orion spacecraft for dedicated cargo missions. And this makes sense too, because Orion is not part of the space launch system. Orion is a payload that can fly on any vehicle capable of interfacing with it. Including the cost of an Orion spacecraft in with the cost of an SLS rocket would be the same as including the cost of a payload in with the cost of the rocket that launches it. To understand just how absurd this line of reasoning is, let's take a look at another rocket, the Ariane 5. The Ariane 5 is Europe's largest rocket in operation today, and it costs around $177 million to launch the vehicle to space. Let's see what happens when we include the cost of the payload in with the cost of the Ariane 5 rocket. The cost that was once $177 million now jumps to a ludicrously high price of $10,177,000,000. This is because if we calculate the cost of a rocket by including the most expensive payload in that cost per launch estimate, as we would be doing for the Orion spacecraft and the SLS rocket, we then have to include the cost of the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope. If this sounds completely ridiculous to you, that's because it actually is ridiculous, and that's the point being made here. If it is so ridiculous to include one payload into the cost per launch of a rocket, then it is ridiculous to include all payloads into the cost per launch of any rocket. With this fact established, we can now move on to the actual cost per launch of an SLS rocket. 
As we've already discussed earlier in the video, the NASA Office of Inspector General says that an SLS launch will cost about $2.2 billion per launch for the first four missions. And that last part is very important, $2.2 billion for just the first four missions. This is because the first four SLS rockets are not being purchased in one big contract. The first two SLSs, Artemis 1 and Artemis 2, were purchased along with the structural test articles and the weld test articles under a developmental contract. This developmental contract prioritized getting the vehicle up and running over cost, and as a result, the first two vehicles were not as cheap as they could have otherwise have been. The Artemis 3 rocket was purchased as a part of a continuing resolution, and as such, no cost savings would be found here either. And Artemis 4 is the first flight of the SLS Block 1B rocket, which means that there is a whole lot of developmental costs that go into the creation of this upgraded vehicle. But after Artemis 4, there is expected to be a contract that purchases a whole lot of SLS rockets in a single block buy. After Artemis 4, the cost per launch of SLS is expected to go down to $1.5 billion due to economies of scale kicking in. Economies of scale essentially means that if you purchase many items at once, the per unit price will typically be lower than the per unit price if you purchased that item on its own, and this applies to SLS too. For right now, the official cost per launch of an SLS rocket is $2.2 billion, but that is only for the first four launches, and future rockets could see a price decrease of $700 million. So that then begs the question, what is the $4.1 billion number? Well, that can actually be described not as the cost per launch of an SLS rocket, but the cost of a single Artemis mission with multiple programs working together. And this number two is expected to fall as well. As we've already discussed, the cost per launch of the SLS rocket is expected to fall by $700 million around Artemis 5, which gives us a cost per mission of $3.4 billion, but that's only just the beginning. Orion is actually partially reusable, and it begins reusing capsules on Artemis 5. So the cost per launch of that mission could be expected to be around $2.4 billion, given that the $1 billion Orion capsule will be reused from a previous flight. Of course, this number doesn't calculate in the cost of the gateway module that will be co-manifested on the rocket since we don't actually know the cost of that item, and it also does not include the cost of the Starship rockets that will be needed to perform a lunar landing on Artemis 5. But a reasonable estimate for the cost of missions Artemis 5 and beyond could be around $2.8 billion all around. While on the surface, the space launch system does seem like a very expensive rocket, once you actually start looking into the different cost aspects of the rocket, the reality of the situation becomes more apparent. The development costs of the rocket seem high at first, but once you compare it to other rockets that NASA has built, it actually turns out to be quite low. And while the cost per launch also seems quite high, it won't always stay that way, and price drops can and will occur in SLS's future as it continues to launch many missions to the moon and even beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We are now only 23 days away from the first ever launch of the Space Launch System, and I hope to be able to get at least one or two more videos out before that happens, so make sure to stay tuned in for those. I would also like to give a shout out to my channel members, Munwalk, Would Die for Chamuske, Myers, and Firefly2806. Thank you guys for sticking around and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help support my channel and get a shout out at the end of my videos, consider becoming a channel member. And with that, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.